Does ship type really matter when it comes to speed? Now, these are questions that I've been asking myself late at night when playing No Man's Sky. Now, I've noticed whenever I'm playing around with different ships, it doesn't feel like any particular type of ship is faster or slower than the other. So, I've gone ahead and I've devised three tests that test each type of ship's capabilities. Now, these tests consist of its own power, so flying from one point to another just by literally going forward and not using any other method of propulsion. The second one is using the boost function to get from one place to the other. And the one after that will be using its warp capabilities to quickly travel from one point of space to the other as well. And the way that we are going to be conducting these tests is each ship will be completely stock. There won't be any other influences on the ship. There won't be anything else installed. The only difference is they'll all be S-class ships. So it's completely fair then across the board. We're not mixing A-classes, B-classes and so on. They're all standardized S-class ships with nothing else installed other than the very basic components. So to start off, guys, we have a shuttle behind me. And I'm going to demonstrate to you what the first test is going to be. So, as you can see here, completely stock shuttle. There's nothing else in here. It's an S-Class. There's nothing else installed. Now, we're going to take off from the anomaly in this first test. And then, once I am able to control the ship, I will start the timer. Now, the timer is in milliseconds. And it counts up from milliseconds to one second, two seconds, and so on. Now, using, in my case, which is W on the keyboard, which is just propulsion only, there's nothing else influencing me getting from one place to another, it's its own thrust, I am going to go from the anomaly to the space station. Now, how long will it take? I don't know. But we're going to be doing this for all of the types of ships. The only time I will be touching anything else with the ship is if I have to destroy an asteroid in front of myself or keeping the flight consistent as possible in order to go through the doors of the space station. Now, when we get to the space station, once the space station automatically takes control of the ship, that is when I stop the timer and that is when we get the results. I'm going to do that by frame by frame analysis on the editing side of things. So when we get that final result, you will see it on camera. So we'll go ahead very quickly guys and just speed up this particular section because as you can see, it was gonna take quite a while under its own power. The time finished at one minute, 46 seconds, 0.250. Now, like I said, once the space station took hold of my ship and I was in no longer in any form of control, that is when the timer stopped. So, for our next ship, we're going to be testing the living ship. Now, if we go into its menu here in the starship section, we can see that there is literally nothing else installed. It is a clean living ship. There's no other boosters or anything else installed. So we're going to take off from the anomaly and then we're going to do the same thing again. Once I'm able to control the ship after leaving the anomaly, that is when the timer will start and then we'll make a beeline for the space station. All right, guys, there we go. And now we have just been pulled by the space station. We are at 1 minute 32 seconds, 0 0.600. So that is a little bit slower. So that's very interesting. So our next ship we're going to be testing is, of course, the hauler. Now, again, going into the ship itself, you can clearly see completely standardized S-Class. Nothing else fancy about it. There are the stats if you are curious. So we're going to do the exact same thing again. Once I'm able to get control of the ship after leaving the anomaly, the counter will start. And the hauler comes in at 1 minute 33 seconds, 0.216. Interesting, so let's go over to the next type of ship. 
Now, behind me, guys, is a fighter. This is going to be the next ship in our lineup. Now, going into the Starship menu, you can see in the general technology, everything is bog standard, and it is, of course, an S-Class. So, we're going to get outside the anomaly here. Start, once I get control, start the timer. So, here we go. And that is 1 minute 33 seconds, 0 0.750 for the fighter. I'm a little surprised by that result. I thought it would have been a little bit quicker, but there we go. This is why we're doing these tests here today. Ah, the Nimble Explorer ship. So we're going to go inside, and as always, we'll have a quick look on the inside of everything. And as you can see, it is completely bog standard. So let's fly out of the anomaly here and start the test. And again, once I get control, that is when the counter will start bottom right. And the results are in. And again, it's very, very surprising that it's come in ahead of a fighter at 1 minute 31 seconds, 0.766. Very impressive. But let's continue with the last ship. So last, but definitely not least, is the exotic ship. Now, going on the inside of it, as always, it's all completely bog standard, S-Class, nothing else included. Once we get out of the anomaly, just like I've said all along, that is when the counter will start and we'll make a boo line for the wonderful space station. Well, holy smokes, at 1 minute 28.983 takes it in for the exotic ship. But let's compare all the ships to a graph and find out which is the quickest and which is the slowest and how they all rank. So looking at this graph here, you can see some very surprising results. The exotic was by far the quickest out of all the other ships and the slowest being the shuttle. Now the shuttle isn't surprising, it's a shuttle. I wasn't expecting that to do absolutely fantastic. But what did surprise me is the second slowest out of the rest of them is a fighter. That is actually really surprising. I thought a fighter would have definitely been quicker than a hauler or an explorer. But here we go, some very surprising results. Now, on to experiment number two, guys. Now, what we're going to be doing is the same line again. We're going to go from the anomaly over to the space station, except we are going to be using the boost function that is available on all ship types. Will that make a difference in regards to the speed, or will it just be the case of exotic being the quickest and shuttle being the slowest? But this is what we're doing, guys. This is how we're going to find out this question. So the shuttle for the very first one here takes in at 18 seconds, 0.100. So next up, guys, it's going to be in the same order as the last test. It's the living ship. What I'm going to do in order to save time, just so then the video isn't too long for you guys here today, I'm going to speed up now each individual run, and then we'll compare the bar chart at the end of this experiment. And the results are in, guys. Now, as you can see, the exotic is still taking the lead. However, the fighter finally came in second place. Explorer, Living Ship, and Shuttle are all doing fairly well in the mid. However, the hauler unfortunately took the longest at 19 seconds. Now, for our final experiment today, experiment number three is going from the space station and how fast can the ship make it to the planet that's right in front of that space station using its warp drive. As you can see, we've got a very respectable five seconds from the shuttle. Ah, 
And the results are finally in. Now, this is another surprising turn of events because the hauler that has been last pretty much the entire time has now taken the lead as the fastest ship when it comes to boosting around to different planets. I mean, how incredible is that? Then it becomes the Explorer, Exotic Fighters, Living Ship and Shuttles all did virtually the exact same time. There was very little difference between them you might as well be called a margin of error you're talking milliseconds so that was a very surprising result but guys let me know what you think about this experiment in the comment section down below what ship is it that you personally use do you think it makes a difference with mods do you think that there could be another way to do this experiment? Again, let me know all your ideas in the comment section down below. And don't forget, before you do leave today, to leave a like on the video. It's very hard on it. And if you are new around here, don't forget to subscribe. Anyway, guys, that's everything from me here today. And as always, my name is Professor Cynical. And I'll catch you all again in the next one. Bye for now.